Natalia Bonner. Welcome back. I'm so excited today to introduce you to my trailer machine quilting ruler. Now, I have to tell you the funniest little story. When I created this fun ruler, you can see it kind of has this fun long shape to it. This is actually a pretty large ruler. This is the biggest of my machine quilting rulers, but I'd first developed the four in one machine quilting ruler. Now, Back up quite a ways, I used to drive a Volkswagen Beetle. I love those cars and they look like a little bubble. So my daughter has always teased me that the four in one ruler kind of looks like a little bug. So when I developed this second ruler, the trailer, for some reason, it just reminded me of a little trailer that was being pulled behind the four in one machine quilting ruler. Kind of silly, I know, but that's really where the name of the trailer came from. So. What about this ruler? Why am I here today? Why am I telling you about this? I love machine quilting with rulers. I share videos here on YouTube. I share them on Patreon. We have online classes, all sorts of different things featuring my machine quilting rulers and machine quilting with rulers. And I know it can be a little bit daunting. It can be overwhelming. Machine quilting with rulers can be intimidating. It took me years and years and years to even try to machine quilt with a ruler. So for all of you that are just starting out in machine quilting with rulers, my hat's off to you because it is a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it, they are so much fun. And really the sky is the limit when it comes to machine quilting with rulers. So just a few details about these machine quilting rulers. Like I said, this trailer ruler is a long ruler. It's quite long. We have all of the details listed below on the exact measurements if you want to learn more about it. We also have all the rulers available for purchase on our website, peaceandquilt.com. The trailer though has this really fabulous long straight line. Now, sometimes you think, why would I want such a long ruler when I'm working in just a short space? Well, sometimes when you're lining things up or if you're stitching a long line, different, there are quite a few instances where having a really long ruler is really nice. Now, besides that, we've also developed this ruler for some specialty type shapes. So we've got a really fabulous curve over here on the side where I will show a video coming up showing how I use that curve. Then we also have this nice angular line here. This is a 45 degree angle. Now, one of the reasons that we made this 45 degree angle on the side of the trailer ruler so that you can line this side of the ruler up with the side of your block, hold your ruler and stitch right along this line and you will have a perfect 45 degree angle stitch line without doing any markings. Now another really cool thing on the trailer ruler and actually on all of my machine quilting rulers, the markings on my rulers are based off of your needle position. So on here, the first marked line is the half inch line, but the line is only a quarter of an inch from the side of the ruler. So what does that mean? That's, that's off, the math is wrong. Well, the reason we've developed the rulers this way is so that your needle, when working with machine quilting rulers, you need to make sure that you are using a ruler foot. Most ruler feet, pretty much all of the ones that I've seen, now I could be wrong, but most ruler feet are a quarter of an inch. So from the center needle position to the outside of the foot is a quarter of an inch. So adding that from the needle position to the side of my ruler, you are at a quarter of an inch. So from there, these measurements are all based on your needle position. When you start doing a lot of machine quilting and you don't wanna do quite as much marking, the markings on these rulers are really, really fabulous. But here's the little disclaimer, do not do any cutting, any rotary type cutting using these rulers because those measurements are based on machine quilting with rulers. A couple other features about my machine quilting rulers before we hop over to the machine. All of my machine quilting rulers, like the trailer here, are thick. It's a little difficult to see it on here, but this is a thick ruler. It's a quarter of an inch thick. The reason the rulers are so thick, not only are they super durable, but they're thick so that they'll glide nicely right along the side of your ruler foot. If you don't have a thick ruler, if you try to do machine quilting with like a rotary type ruler or something that's not quite this thick, chances of your ruler popping up on top of your foot or going under your foot or something crazy breaking are pretty high. So always make sure when you are doing machine quilting with rulers that you are using the correct type of rulers. Let's hop over to the machine, go over a few more details and do a little bit of stitching.
Machine quilting rulers are different from rotary rulers. Machine quilting rulers are about twice as thick as rotary rulers. Mine are all a quarter of an inch thick. And the markings generally start at one half inch. The markings on the machine quilting rulers are measured from the needle. So you can measure distances between stitching lines with the ruler instead of having to mark out every single line. Machine quilting rulers can be used on long arm machines as well as domestic, mid arm, or sit down machines. If you're using the machine quilting rulers on a long arm machine, I highly recommend using an extended base plate around the base of your machine. This will create a larger working space and enable you to hold the ruler flat and flush up against the ruler foot. When using the machine quilting rulers on a domestic machine, you will need to make sure you have a ruler foot. A ruler foot is available from your machine quilting dealer and aftermarket ruler feet are also available. You'll also need to make sure that you're working on a machine that has the ability to drop the feed dogs and there's at least one quarter inch clearance all the way around the foot. Additionally, when working with rulers on your domestic machine, I highly recommend a grip material on the back of your ruler. We have this available on our website, peaceandquilt.com. This can also be used when working on a long arm machine. The grip material on the back of the ruler helps the ruler grip onto the fabric and stay a little bit sturdier. Now in all of my videos, I'm not always using grip. That's because I use move my ruler so quickly. That does not mean that you don't have to use grip or you can't. I highly recommend it. The rulers that we will be using here are the rulers that I have designed and they are designed for machine quilting. Since these are my favorite rulers, that's what I always recommend. However, most machine quilting rulers can be used in the same manner. You can use the markings on the machine quilting rulers instead of marking out every single point to point. You can pick up the rulers, plus I also recommend picking up my book, Visual Guide to Creative Straight Line Quilting. In that book, I actually walk you step by step through the basics of machine quilting with rulers, plus there's 60 awesome designs teaching you how to machine quilt with rulers. Now, let's get stitching! Beginning in the lower left corner of my block, I'll hold my trailer machine quilting ruler so that the markings on the corner intersect my corner. From there, I'll stitch a nice rounded corner rounding right around the curved edge of the trailer ruler. Once I've stitched along that first corner, I'll adjust my machine quilting ruler, stitch up the ditch a quarter of an inch. So I'm adjusting my ruler so that the outside of my ruler lays right along my previous stitch line. Now you'll notice because my corner does get a little bit bigger with the curve each time, I am going to focus on lining the outside edge of my ruler up with my previous stitch line all the time. I'm not focusing on lining up that corner every time. I'll repeat that process working my way back and forth across the block, filling it in with that nice corner design, my lines a quarter of an inch apart all the way until I've completed that motif. From there, I'll stitch in the ditch around the outside of the block.
For the Argyle design, I'll start out by using the Mark Be Gone marker and marking a blue mark at the top center and bottom center of the block. Then I'll get my trailer machine quilting ruler starting in the upper corner. I'll line the ruler up so that inter it intersects the marked point at the bottom of the block. I'll stitch from the upper corner to the lower marked point. From there, I'll rotate my ruler and stitch to the upper opposite corner. From that top corner, I'll again use my trailer ruler and stitch along my ditch down to the bottom corner. From there, I'll readjust my ruler. Now from the bottom corner, I'll stitch to the top center point on my block. From the top center point, I'll adjust my ruler and stitch back down to the opposite corner. After that, I'll stitch in the ditch all the way around the outside of the block.